Well, welcome to Crowning Connections with Rob Clemens. This is our CCMF edition. We're still here live at the Carolina Country Music Festival, and it has been such a pleasure getting to know some of the artists here. And um, today, I, I feel like we got an even more special treat because we got none other than LV Shane here. What's up, everybody? Uh, man, he's been killing it. Uh, he's got, a, got a, some hit songs, and he's here performing this weekend at the CCMF. And also, he was telling me some stuff beforehand that was kind of blowing my mind about a little bit of roofing work. So we're going to talk about that, too. Absolutely. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, man, thank you guys for coming over and seeing me on the bus. It's cool. Getting to, uh, man. It's the first time doing this on the bus. So good, man. The lighting's just right. Maybe Everything. change it up a little bit. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we know we're in Myrtle Beach, so it's like 95 degrees outside. So I'll take this. First time ever at Myrtle Beach, by the way. Okay. Really? First time? Yeah, never been. Man, you got to get by and check out some places before you leave here. I need to get up off my ornery ass and go. To <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, play your songs and everything. Yeah. We don't want to lose that. But then, you know, go check out something but uh it's cool hey listen you've had a, a pretty amazing career so far um and one of the things i think that, that connects with people so much is you always stay authentic you know i feel like you you were talking about some of the blue collar upbringing and things and um i even heard uh something that your dad had said it was it, i think the phrase was always forward but never yeah, straight, straight yeah. right tell yeah. us about that man yeah i mean he just meant just just keep chugging along you know and you, you're gonna get somewhere you're gonna bounce off course from time to time but as long as you hit it that way in some way form or fashion you'll get where you're going yeah and uh you know that was very much his motto and and my family's motto i mean we we definitely had some stuff happen that knocked us off course from time to time but yeah. But here we are. Started at the bottom. Now we're slightly in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> slightly. In the, hey, you're doing a little better than then slightly oh, in the man. middle. Uh, All right, we're, we're in the middle. <laughs> no, he's got this song, "My Boy," that kind of blew up. Were you expecting that? Man, we wrote that song six years ago, and I played it every freaking chance <laughs> I had for like four years, five years, and um, you know, I I knew that if it could just get out in the right. I don't know, on the right platform or in front of the right ears that, that I think people would relate to it. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't ever, you know, anticipate that it was going to do what it has done. Um, it just, you know, I wrote it as a song uh, about myself. I really wrote that song from a place of hope because coming into uh, a woman's life or, or a man's life, I'm sure, who has children and, uh, you know, you can't help but be like, oh, okay, these are the things that I feel like should change about this situation. I'm going to ride in mm -hmm. on my white horse and fix everything about it, right? But you quickly find out that, you know, you have to figure out where you fit in all of that, not where you can change it to. Yeah. to make it. So, there, so there was a lot of, there was a lot of initial uh, struggle in all of that. And, and I began to wonder after a few years if I was ever really going to, be able to achieve what I really wanted to achieve uh, in coming into this boy's life. And, and that was just to, to be a father. And, and, and so I really wrote that song from a place of hope when I first wrote it with, sure. with my friends. Uh, it's just me and three other guys to all getting started. You mm -hmm. know? And I, I wanted my son to hear this when he was old enough to understand it and be like, hey, this was this was what his intentions were coming into my life. Yeah. And uh and now, you know, I'm starting to see the, the fruits of those labors more and right. more as as he gets older and is able to understand. Uh but yeah, never knew that it would start out as my song and become, you know, and just like so resonate people's songs yeah it's, it's really cool to see that happen. I, I think part of it is is there never been a song like that i mean i feel like you know you get a lot of songs about a lot of different things but i mean to have something from the heart like that i mean it's just you just all see that yeah man i uh i don't know of any that are from the the stepfather's perspective that yeah. have that have had uh i i don't know a, a mainstream connection like my boy did i, I remember uh I think it was Kenny Chesney. No, it was uh, it was Brad Paisley. Man, he didn't have to be. Uh, back in '99, it was from the it was from the the son's point of view, where the mom mm -hmm. starts dating this guy, and then he asks if the boy can go to the movies with him, and so so it's kind of the opposite, the flip side, you know, spectrum right? of that. But um, I know there's a there's a couple independent uh, guys. A guy named Brandon. Oh my. Gosh, what is his name? I'd really love to give him a shout out because he had a song that he wrote uh, from a stepdad's perspective that came out, you know, 
not too long after ours, and I and I, you know, I think he had written it well before that. Yeah. You know? So it wasn't like he was trying to tag on. A yeah, yeah. But but it was a really good song too. If I can remember, I'll send you guys so you can maybe put a link. One hundred percent. Yeah, cool. when we cut it together, we we'll definitely give him some uh, credit on there. That's that's super cool, man. Well, you know, you uh. Yeah, I looked back at your upbringing and, and you've had a lot of things that probably made you who you are today. I saw like, you know, you got a church upbringing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of like singing and some hymns and stuff. Were you in choir back in church or were you uh, just? We didn't have a choir. We, it was pretty, pretty oh, okay. established. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, okay. yeah. it's all my family for the most part. There was the Peyton family, which yeah. is my dad's family, and then the Mud family. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, a few other uh a smaller groups of different families that were there um but pretty much everybody either could sing or tried to make a joyful noise in that church <laughs> right? and, uh, yeah uh, so i just i was kind of engulfed in it my my entire life my, my mom said i was born on a sunday and the following sunday she had me held tightly beside a hymnal you know, oh right that, nice man probably trying to ward off my daddy's demons I like <laughs> oh, to say, no. but yeah. uh but I, yeah we'd go to church with mom um ride to church listening to 90s country usually the nascar race would be starting up so he'd be playing 90s country and then little ads Ooh, for nascar yeah and then um and then after church, and the race would be going on, and he'd get home, and Dad'd be drinking Bud Lights and catching him a good buzz, working on mm. either working on some old car that he had traded for, or working on one of the semi trucks. Uh, he always he always had his own truck or a couple trucks uh, growing up. So then I'd end up outside working with him on that, listening to Steve Earle, John Fogarty, right on. Leonard Skinner, Otis Redding, and he just he had a lot of love for a lot of different types of classic rock and blues and he really loved lyrics where my mom was much more about singing okay it was yeah a cool blend i get you yeah it's, it's almost like he's really listening and internalizing yeah. the lyrics and your mom's more about the melody and stuff yeah. um do you do you find and, and the reason i laughed a little bit ago is i grew up in the church my dad's a preacher and we've been to all those different kinds of churches so you got someone they don't have a choir you just oh, like, yeah, yeah man we just we just sing we had a we had a music or we had a song leader okay yeah so yeah that's right usually one of the deacons it was like probably my uncle that yeah. couldn't sing his way out of the freaking <laughs> nothing but, but he's he still was, trying yeah, though still trying oh man, man. you gotta love it but yeah that, that's cool so uh definitely you know a foundation in the church somebody asked me how i live in my faith these days uh doing what i do and my answer was poorly mm. but i but i but i still try to i still try to keep it alive uh you know and more than anything just like i just try to live by that golden rule you know and, and if you listen to the whole record in the middle of the record i've got a friend of mine uh who i went to college with he was a rapper mm -hmm. he, he does a skit because I, I grew up listening to these rap records too. Oh, oh they always have the skit. Yeah, so yeah. we put a skit in there, and, and he ended up just, he said, this is a country music presentation by brother L.B. Shane, and he, and he continues to read the golden rule out of the Bible. <laughs> and uh, it says, the whole the whole law can be summed up in this one word, love, mm -hmm. thy neighbor as thyself. So I'm just out here trying to figure it all out, yeah. you know, and and, uh, and love my neighbor as, as often as I can. Oh, boy, it's hard sometimes. <laughs> but, man, I love you, but I don't want to choke you. Sometimes. Oh, man. Hey, you know what? I think that might be your next album yeah. title, you know, love your neighbor, but it's hard sometimes. It's you know? hard sometimes. Right. It's, it's, cool. it's, more, it's harder more often than not out yeah. here these days. But, uh, but yeah, man, I think it's uh, it's all about there. There's one thing like all that everybody everybody's all going crazy these days about. There's the there's so much progress, and some people don't like the progress. Some people are, are fighting for even more progress. But I think the the common uh, denominator in all of it is this one word is empathy, yeah. right? And so there, I don't think there's anything wrong with with trying to find a little bit of empathy, but but also to stand. You know, stand your ground when you when you believe something passionately. So cool, man. We can all get behind that for sure. And, and talk about backslider in general. You know, you uh, did, you mentioned the one song, my boy. It was six years in the in the making. Did did you write most of those songs coming up right before the album comes out, or is this a collection of things from over the years? Well, I so my boy, we wrote that six years ago. I think it was like July thirty first of two thousand sixteen or something. We wrote that song. Uh, me, Nick Columbia. Uh, Russell Sutton, Lee Starr, four of us guys that were fairly new to town, didn't have anything going on. And uh, 
after that, we all ended up with publishing deals from that song, so we all ended up getting a job, you know, being paid for writing songs uh, based off that song, which was cool. Um, but then I got my record deal, and I thought I had, uh, I thought I had a collection of songs that I would have put in a record, and then I, I literally put the ink on the paper. We go into the office, sit down, and they're like, "Elby, we feel like you have one song." And I was like, well, I feel like you're all cool shit. <laughs> you know? right. But no, I'm so glad they did that though, man. Cause what I had was a collection of, you know, what I, what I thought were good songs. But what that pushed me to do was say, okay, well, what do I want to, what story do I want to tell? Uh, what am I trying to tell people? And so I, I probably wrote 300 songs, wow. you know, in the course of two years and, well, I really like right after that meeting, I, I started writing. I would go in at nine in the morning to write with somebody. Sometimes I go write with my buddy Scooter at like seven in the morning because he's the only person I know in the world that will write at seven in the morning, which is cool. <laughs> That's I mean, an interesting time to write a song. I like to write that. Yeah. Well, what's cool about then is, is you're tired. You don't fight your intuition as much. You know? Oh, okay. So it's like you get up a little early. It's like, you, and that's why I like writing really late too sometimes. Sometimes I'll, I'll literally force, if I know I have a write that I'm really excited about, and you know somebody that I, I feel like we're, we're going to speak the same language i'll make myself stay up till like three four in the morning Oof, wow and then get up at eight you know just because i, I got a little bit of this you know that where well, i'm not gonna fight myself as hard Man, that's cool and i find more inspiration i always find more inspiration whether it be it a you know up tempo song or a ballad i find more inspiration when i feel a little down okay i don't know okay. why but yeah. it's just, maybe it's i feel more normal there <laughs> right 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 exactly but uh but no so i would get up at nine i would go right at nine i, I for a couple of hours and i'd jump in a room with somebody at 11 or 12 and write till four or five and then i'd write at night and that's do that three or three to five times a week for like three or four months so we, we put all these songs together and i started pulling from and what i noticed and uh was there was like a chronological order of, of my life pretty much and that's how the, the mm. record backsliders put together and starts with a very circular song called i will run ends with a very circular song called miles kind of pull you back around um but the, it's the days and confused years the mandy years which is my wife mm -hmm. and the nashville years and i left certain parts out on purpose like uh my years in college i didn't really touch on on that in the record um i didn't touch on my years as an evangelist in that on that wow. record because it gave me some somewhere to go back for this next record for sure uh but backslider uh you know just became uh my my autobiography and and i felt like you know if you first record maybe let <sighs> people get to know you a little better so cool man well it's definitely resonated and, and you can see this in the way that people are responding to it and some real introspective stuff i mean I, you know listen to the, some of the songs you can hear like the introspection and, and you know i i gotta follow up on some of your stuff you know you talked about before you got into this this successful career here and, and some of the things you've been doing you know always stay with a blue collar mentality uh you've done some roofs you know that kind of got us excited here at monarch yeah. roofing you know like talking about you've done some shingle roofs some metal roofs um what uh what do you think is like your you know when you look back on your life what is the thing you did other than singing that you enjoy the most uh probably you know what little bit of it i was able to do i, I really did love driving a truck yeah if, if all of this was to go downhill i would i wouldn't mind to go drive a truck and my brother just so my my mom and dad kind of hit a hard spot when i was a kid and dad lost his trucking company and they had to file bankruptcy and stuff but uh, my brother bought back the the rights to the company, and so it's got the same name and everything. And and bought two trucks, two trucks. Dude, cool. twenty six years old. He's man, killing. he's killing it. Just for paid sure. off his first truck. Man, um, within you know like a year, year and a half of the business going. Uh, wow, he's he's a boss, man. But uh, he's always been good with money. I never have. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so him and dad are trucking again. If if everything went south here, I'd probably just. Get behind a Cummins and a Peterbilt or a Kenworth or something, and, yeah, and just haul some grain. Or just something. be at peace with the world, man. Right? Man, I just I love the road more That's than cool. anything. That's what I like about this job is just being out here and 
I mean, I hate being tired, but it also, like I said, it just kind of feels normal. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I Some get you. Some are tired, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, love with energy drinks at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to watch NASCAR. You mentioned you guys would watch NASCAR when you're. Man, I love NASCAR. Yeah. I uh, I tend to miss it more than I, than I would like to these days. Yeah. But anything that uh, anything that sounds like NASCAR, I'm down with NASCAR, <laughs> drag racing, whatever. Heck we just yeah. went to Vegas. Me and uh. My my bass player Jacob Miller, uh, his dad sponsors a guy named Jason Rupert, um, and they put my my album cover on the this Top Fuel nice car. And we went out there, and, and I stood twenty feet behind forty four thousand horsepower man. It was four Ooh. four wide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The race, and they take off, and they told me like hold hold your mouth open a little bit, you know, because when it takes off, it like chatter your teeth and and. I just didn't know what to expect. Yeah. This is the most violent thing I've ever witnessed. <laughs> oh, shit. I literally, like, I, I broke my tooth. What? I, I lost part Whoa. of my tooth. Like, a few days after I got home, I, I'm like, what is going on? And I, I, I Man, it's violent right yeah, there. I, no, Holy. no kidding, man. It was crazy. It, and then we went, and then we went up in the, like, the suite up in the top, and you could still feel it. <laughs> oh yeah 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 it's, it is it's a lot of power you know i gotta tell you uh we I went to some of my first nascar races in person the last uh couple of years and it is man you just feel the, the, the noise and i didn't wear i see this is a rookie mistake i wasn't wearing my headphones when i got out of there i couldn't hear it for three days <laughs> yeah, yes. i'm telling you man i, I made sure and took care of my ears but yeah you gotta uh, do that right that's a struggle in this business hey you know next time nascar's in darlington it'll be rolling back around fall you should come down and join us man man i would love to I was, uh, I think I was supposed to come over here. I got another friend, uh, a guy named Drew Plotkin. He's got a, uh, like a tattoo um, aftercare business and, and stuff. And right he does sunscreen for tattoos and stuff. But he was, he was sponsoring uh, the tr one of the trucks. And I was supposed to come over here around my birthday. But I ended up not being able to be home. But like 10 days since the middle of March. Oh, wow. So it was my birthday weekend that weekend and my anniversary weekend. I was like, I got, I can't go, man. I got to be home. Man, for real, for real. Well, we I would uh, love to come out and, and man, hang out and, and watch the race. So it'd be yeah, sick. Yeah, no, we love that. We've been sponsoring an Xfinity driver, Ryan Vargas, uh, a couple of years in a row okay. now. Man, good guy, man. He, he works hard and we go out and check him out at the track. It's always a lot of fun. That's so, sick, hey, man. if you can be back in Darlington next time, we, we got to get together for sure on that. You know, Ryan Vargas is he? He's in the car, right? Oh, uh, he's he's in the car. He does. Um, so he is a uh, race for a couple. Of, he was one of the. He was the first person to have a TikTok sponsor. Uh, car so like, like that was pretty cool for him and uh, we sponsor him a little bit he works around but uh, yeah real good guy man he's a social media guy like crazy okay. check him out sometime for sure I know I'm a, I'm a fan of, uh, of Ryan Blaney too oh, Ryan's, uh, yeah I like watching boy. him race yeah. no, old number 12 there man he's, he gets around for sure he does he, he gets a little squirrely now, now. now are you a Ford guy are you a Ford, a Ford guy, guy. alright see so, you know there you go right there are man you Chevy guy? Uh, you know, I like them both I had a Mustang growing up yeah. you know so like that was my car but but, uh, you know, I like Chevy, too. Hey, man, 98% of Chevys are still on the road. <laughs> That's right. 2% made it home. Yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> there you go, right? Oh, uh, it's funny. Hey, what would you say to a, a young person thinking about getting in the business of music? I mean, what, you know, from your experience, what would you tell them? Don't. Don't? <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I wish I, wish I would have known uh, what to do growing up because, you know, you grow up listening and you hear this stuff on the radio and, and it, your dream kind of starts from that and from what your parents listen to. But you don't really know a path. And um, I think, you know, Nashville obviously is, is one of the places that you can go for music. Mm -hmm. um, just take the chance. You know, if, if, if that's what your dad said on when you, if, you know, if we're speaking to kids in particular, you mm -hmm. turn 18 or 19, 20, whatever, when it's time for you to leave home. Go there. Yeah. If it's if it's Nashville, if it's Los Angeles, if it's uh, you know Atlanta, if it's wherever it is that has the music scene that you're really trying to to tap into, go there and, yeah. and start trying to meet people and and go to the places where where the songwriters or the music people hang out. And a lot of people like try to tell you that you shouldn't kick down doors anymore. Like that's not how it works. You need to meet people and like eventually, but. 
you still got to kick down some doors. Yeah. You, know? you got to believe in yourself and be passionate enough to, to take those chances to look like an idiot sometimes, you know? It's like, got to be willing to look like an idiot once in a while. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I was writing uh, with my buddy Oscar, uh, Charles, who produced uh, the record one day, and I, I spit out a line and he was just quiet and I said, yeah, when they, when I first came to town, they told me dare to be stupid. Mm -hmm. And we went on about our business and a couple minutes later, he said a line and I said, did they tell you the same thing? So <laughs> I love that. I love that. That was, such, that was one of those moments. It's like, oh man, here's a good one. <laughs> you gotta say it. I don't get those very often. Yeah. You're <laughs> saving it. Here it is. No, but, be, on a serious note, like practice. Yeah. Practice your ass off. I, I would listen to records that I loved and write the lyrics as I listened to the records. Um, what I didn't apply myself at as much as I should have was my instrument, playing guitar. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe your instrument is only your voice. If that's what you want it to be, that's cool. Yeah. But I think being multifaceted within your uh, your choice of you know passion right. is a good is absolutely a good thing. But you're never gonna get anywhere if you don't if you don't develop some work ethic right on yeah I, I know i know so many super talented songwriters singers that just continue to fall into the same old traps there's a saying about persistence that guy that used to go around in the 60s or 70s and do these like workshops i cannot remember I think it was like zig ziglar kind of a guy or like yeah uh, uh, but uh you know what i'll just look yeah look, look it up man I, I would love for them to i've Dear friend, Jan Beckemeyer, who gave me a little plaque that had this on it, and it, it really inspired me persistent. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're all about is the inspiration, so uh, definitely down with you finding something. Let's see here. Persistence quote. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, here it is. Let's see. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than the unsuccessful men with talent. Mm. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are, omnip are omnipotent. Lord, did you tell I you know, <laughs> backwards education there? Oh, oh, that was sick, though. But, it, but yeah. I mean, that, that really is it. And then another thing is when as people start coming into your life that, you know, are in the industry that you're pursuing, whether it's roofing or songwriting or acting or whatever, as people start coming into your life who've been in that world longer than you, keep the keep those people around you who who are passionate about you and believe in you and are mighty. I like to say I keep people around me who are mighty where I am weak. Mm. And you gotta learn to swallow mm. the ego a lot if you're gonna get into it. Boy, I still got plenty of it. Well, boy, <laughs> you gotta I'm have some of it. <laughs> you gotta keep some ego. That's fine. I'm not proud of it uh, all the time, but every now and then it's necessary. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, these are one of the coolest things that I meet success is like, you know, what you've done. And, you know, whether it's a NASCAR driver or a great book writer, the, the common traits, man, is perseverance, persistence. And you look at um, surrounding yourself with people who inspire you, but also people who can add something to you. And uh, when you said that, that actually spoke with me. So, and, and I think those are good tips for anybody trying to get ahead. So that's super cool. What you'll see too is it'll start out with two or three, and then yeah. as long as you stay persistent, yeah, you'll look around you one day and there'll be an army, yeah, there'll be a whole yeah. village of people around you that are, that are mighty and where where you are weak, man, and and that's that's the best reward that that beats the biggest paycheck, that beats the number ones that beats that beats everything man yeah. when you look around and see you got a village around you i gotta say speaking of a village man when you get out in front of this this crowd man people who came to see you you know um what's it feel like hell i came to see them i don't know <laughs> I, right? for real man like, <laughs> I, so cool. I, I, my per my perception changed uh so much here a while back we went out and did our first arena show with cody johnson and and i thought it was so cool to get to do my first arena show with cody johnson mm -hmm. and uh, i just I, I love the man love what he stands for he's he's authentic yeah. you know dude's texas is armadillo stew and he is a cowboy <laughs> and, and i freaking right. love it and i ain't no cowboy but i told the whole crowd that both nights you know, but i was like I, i'm all hat and no cowboy at best there you but, go. yeah uh, but there was a moment where we we do this song called miles and 
we it's kind of a ballad and I ask everybody in the arena to to turn their lights on their phones. Like I know this is cliche. So oh like, man. Please just I, I gotta experience Can't this. Do it. So they do and they turn the lights down and I'm standing there and then the, the spotlight's on me too, so it's even kinda of, it messes with your eyes a little bit to yeah. makes everything else look so much darker. And all these lights. And I'm looking and I was like, man, really uh see who the real stars are now. You know what I mean? And so wow. that that moment was was really cool. And not that I didn't already appreciate them so much, but it was just like none of it happens and it, and it's it's you know obvious, but none of it happens without people showing up. Man. Right? And people relating to what what we're trying to put out in the world. So you know, I, I think that's something that for the people and we talk about humanizing the process, you know, the the people who come to the show today, they gotta know how much they mean to you guys. Cause I've heard you you said that or heard Frank Cray say it yesterday. I mean a lot of people feel like that. You they inspire you guys so much. So when they're coming out, like they, they should feel good about that they came to see you, but you're coming to see them, man. That's powerful stuff. Um I take in too much of your time already, but I do want to ask yeah, you one man. thing. What do you have coming up next? I mean like we're we're out here, you know, hitting the road for festivals for the yeah. summer. I'm I'm really focused on trying to go in and hit certain areas in the business. They would call it markets, you know. Yeah. But I, I want to go and pay a lot of attention to where people have been listening to our music the most because mm -hmm. we can kind of see that on uh, on our data and stuff from streaming and radio, airplane, and all that stuff. So uh, go back and give some love to the people who's been giving us love. Right on. Uh, do some smaller clubs and start building the foundation with, you know, people who, that are willing to come in and fill up a 300 or 500 cap room first. Heck yeah. And uh, I think that builds a, a very firm foundation. And and two, it's just so it's so much more intimate. I love doing festivals. I love doing, uh, you know, the arena show was cool. Mm -hmm. The the amphitheater is cool, but there's nothing better than when you're in a 500 to 2,000 cap room and they're right there and you reach out and fist bump them if you want to, Right, you know, and you, you actually get to know people and you start seeing them show up at multiple locations when mm -hmm. you're hitting areas and though we've had people come two or three nights in a row. So you start getting to know people and, and it's cool. And I usually try to like, after those shows in particular, you know, 90% of the time I go out to the, to the merch booth and you don't have to buy nothing. If mm. you want to. Just if you want to come shake my hand, whatever, but, I, I try to meet everybody that wants to meet me. So we're going to do that. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm working on, on more music. I know we nice. just put a record out, but nice. you can't keep people's attention for yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah, 2022, man. So Stay ahead of it. Maybe the uh, maybe the backslider record becomes a cult classic after we release a bunch yeah. of other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That'd yeah. be the dream. That'd be cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just working on new music. Got some really cool features that, I, that I've had the opportunity to do. I had somebody sing on a song with me just a couple weeks ago as one of my heroes. Okay. I can't tell you who. Oh, you man. Oh, okay. All right. No, I can't when, actually. When he, will we know? No, he spilled the beans and Rolling Stones. So <laughs> I cut a, a version of Poncho and Lefty uh, with Steve Earl. Oh, no and way. So, yeah. So Steve is Steve my hero, man. And he and man. I say never meet your heroes, but this, this guy has been, I mean, I'd like to think I can consider him a friend at this wow. point. He's he's been so kind to me, and and he's in, he's into all kinds of stuff that I would love to kind of venture into. He's been a great actor, mm -hmm. and writer, and everything. Uh, that and then, but there is there is some stuff that I can't really some talk about yet. Secret. But it'll be out this summer and this yeah. fall, and and I can't wait for it. some stuff that I'm pretty sure somebody screwed up the paperwork, and I still think <laughs> oh, somebody, come on, somebody's man. gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> but uh, no, man, it's it's exciting. Some. Uh, some music, some film stuff, so. Shoot, yeah, man. Cool. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this, man. We're all going to be rooting for you. The viewers are rooting for you. You are down to earth guy. And I love it, man. This has been such a, a pleasure for me. And, and LV, I know we're all out here to see you tonight. I know it's going to be a big night for you. Um, look forward to stay in touch with you. All right. Appreciate you, Thank you for being on. All right. You, man. And this is Rob Clemens with Crowning Connections, where I see CMF. LV Shane, come check him out.